So let's just go straight to the uh, COVID-19 business of the day. A lot of revelations okay. have, have uh, been counted about spouses mm -hmm. and marriages just discovering, discovering each other um, uh, in both positive and negative ways, especially during this lockdown. What's your take on that? What do you think? Um, well, I would say that the lockdown actually exposed a lot of things that a lot of people didn't know about their spouses or their partners. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, even though it's a negative time where people are dying and falling sick, I always try to look at the positive side of things. Mm -hmm. Because now, things that we didn't know before, we are now realizing that we, we skip some certain parts when it, when it comes to getting to know our partners. Because mm -hmm. now people realize that going to work every day was actually an unconscious escape route. Yes. People just go to work, and those hours in the day you spend with other people, you only come home, you know, play with everyone, eat Absolutely. and go to bed. Exactly. Same thing, yeah. And then weekends, there's party, there's wedding, Sunday go to church, Monday start again. So we have all been living a routine life mm. for a very long time. But this lockdown made sure that we sat in the house together. We are in each other's faces. Those things that we could avoid by going out or going to work and hanging out with people, we can't avoid them anymore. Mm. So the good, the bad, and the ugly is within us there. We have a fight, it's inside the house. Mm. We are playing, it's inside the house. We have an argument about something, it's inside the house. Right now, some women are just discovering that their husbands don't like to flush. <laughs> All these little, little things. Yeah. They are now beginning to discover that, oh, I didn't know this before. So now... There are a lot of emotions that people can't handle. They don't know how to handle some emotions. They don't know how to handle certain things that they didn't take note of before. Mm. So there's a lot of exploding inside of the home mm. that they didn't have before, you know. So I think that this period has given everybody an opportunity to see the worst side and the best side of their partners. Mm. Unfortunately, the worst side is making the news now because Men who are very aggressive, mm -hmm. who were able to control it before because they spent half the time away from their home. Yeah. Now they're inside their home 24-7 yes. and they cannot control it anymore. They are taking it out on their wives right. right now. And they know that because of the lockdown, you can't call for help. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to risk their life and come and save you or help you. Mm -hmm. So they do these things and get away with it. But this lockdown has exposed so many things that people didn't realize before but now that they know my hope is that we will not start to take safety measures we will not start to understand how to live with our spouses with our children and know how to live our lives in our homes and our families so that the things that we discover can be fixed mm, thank you, you so know? much for yeah. that you know and uh, this mm -hmm. just shows that most of our time we spend the best part of our of our time with other people instead of uh, yeah. our families exactly thank you so much yeah. for shedding light on that so the next question i think yeah. i want to ask is the responsibility of an average woman in this lockdown mm -hmm. i'm very sure has definitely mm -hmm. or obviously multiplied homeschooling the kids uh, attending to or tending to domestic needs Working from home, mm -hmm. how does the women find strength in all of this? Well, I'm, I'm going to be selfish I, I would have here said because... Nigeria, I, would have said, I would have tailored it down to Nigerian women specifically, but I yeah. mean, women in general, really. Women, you... women in general, we're all in the same category because exactly. we're all home. Most of us have to work from home. Mm. Our children are home. Our spouses are home. Mm. Before, when you have to cook twice a day because your children will probably eat lunch at school or something, now you have to cook three times a day. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to make sure. And people are wearing more house clothes now. So laundry has doubled. Mm. You know, the things that you have to buy, toiletries have doubled. So you have mm. to buy things. That, but the thing is, I've always said that a balanced home, cannot depend solely on just the woman to do everything from beginning to end. Absolutely. I used to say something before, and I said, I've trained and raised my kids in such a way that even at a young age, there are some things they should be able to do by themselves. But a lot of people spoil their children, so they end up slaving away as if, you know, they are the, 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 the house helps of the home. Mm. But it's not supposed to be like that. The children are supposed to be able to handle things by themselves. The husbands, like it or not, we are home 24-7. The least you can do is support the woman so that the workload on her is not as much as 
it will be ordinarily if everybody pitches in. So that's how I, I choose to run my home. Mm. And at the same way that when you are building a family, everybody has roles and responsibilities. Mm. And it shouldn't be that the woman is the only one that's in the kitchen, that's cleaning, that's doing this. Because sometimes if I'm cooking, my husband is the one doing work with the mm. kids. Mm. Sometimes if I'm doing laundry, my husband is going to get the milk. We have to split it. My children, sometimes I get them to clean up the house or I go do grocery shopping, you know. So it has, there has to be a balance because when I hear women say, oh God, I'm dying in my house, I'm doing everything, it's work now. I'm like, so the rest of your family, what are they doing? Exactly. Are they just sitting down and letting you do all the work? Mm. You will burn out. That is why Absolutely. women now get frustrated these days. Mm. They now take their anger out on their husband because people mm. think there's only men that get angry. No. A woman who's working from home, taking care of husband, taking care of children, cleaning, doing everything, will definitely be exhausted, will definitely get sure. frustrated, and take her anger out on her partner too, and the argument will start. Right. So I think there should be a balance. Everybody should agree on, okay, when mommy is doing this, let me do this. When my wife is doing this, let me do this. Balance yourself out and don't kill yourself because you are not a, you are not a robot, you are human. And you need breaks. Women need to always take a break. Even if it's 30 minutes to an hour in a full day, mm. take a break by yourself. Go into the bedroom, lie down, and have your alone time so that you're very refreshed and come back again and start your work. All right. Thank you so much for that submission. That is so enlightening, I think. And the next question yeah. is, according to um, WHO, some part of U.S. like yeah. Atlanta recorded a 15% rise in domestic mm -hmm. um, violence, why some part of UK recorded a 16 percent, um, 16.6 percent, if I'm if I'm correct, um, rise of domestic yeah. violence even against men. How can we account yeah. for this acceleration? I bet it's what I've been saying about you know the things that being home together 24 7 has brought. Mm. Now we're beginning to realize that a lot of these things were avoided because people would go out, go to work, hang out, and spend more time with other people than mm. their partners. But now that they're in their partner's spaces, mm. like I just said, sometimes women too can get frustrated and take out their frustration on the men. Yes. Yeah, and the men too, same thing. Yeah, you know. So now, the reason why in America it has risen is because of the fact that it is difficult to get help. Mm. Because he, here, unlike Africa, they don't take likely to domestic violence. It's yes. a real crime. You, yes. If a woman calls the cops, that's when you're done. Yes. But because of the lockdown, um, the priority is to COVID-19 patients, is to testing. The law enforcement people are enforcing the law, making sure that people are not gathering, people are not going to. So their priorities have changed. Hmm. They are now looking into health. Every law enforcement agency department in America has been collecting all their volunteers and all their staff to focus on this health crisis. So a lot of people that are going through domestic violence or uh, assault here and there or mini crimes here and there, they're not getting as much help and as much attention mm -hmm. as they would have gotten in the past. So because of that, a lot of people know if I do this to my spouse, if you like, start calling all the helplines. Nobody the people in the, you, that yeah. work in those places, exactly, the people that work in those places, they will pick the phone call day to their home trying to save themselves so yeah. i can do this and get away with it you know so it's just mm. rising because of the increased tension people don't know where money is coming from you know money is not reaching everyone yes the government is trying to help but people haven't worked because you know we had a lockdown even before africa yes true. so we've been on lockdown for over two months mm. so some people have not paid their rent they haven't paid bills Food is a problem. There are some places where some people can get food, but it's not. You can, they cannot feed every single family in America. Mm. Children are stuck, you know. So that anger and that frustration makes it very easy to have no tolerance. Yeah. So any little thing sparks off annoyance. People start to argue, and before you know it, somebody has slapped somebody. Before you know it, they are fighting, and the woman is crying, and nothing can be done. Mm -hmm. And the worst part is that in all of this, the children are home. They are not in school. Exactly. They are home to see all this happening. Exactly. And it's just rising because as the children are seeing it, they are getting angry. They are getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. Then they take it out on the other siblings mm -hmm. before you know it. The whole place is ablaze. That's part of the reason why they are trying to start opening some places gradually, gradually, just so that 
people can ease off on the you know total lockdown to 24 7 and people can breathe because there's something that's stepping out of the house and seeing other human beings there's something it does yes. yeah you know so so it's, 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 it's been rising especially for countries that have experienced longer lockdown earlier than other places it's, mm. it's becoming very frustrating yeah mm. thank you so much for that and i know that um um, I don't know if you saw it sometimes in January before the pandemic strike in uh, in Nigeria. Abuja recorded a large number of divorce applications. Being a relationship yeah. expert and yeah. lifestyle mentor, what are mm. the root causes of all these divorces? Okay, so <laughs> I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that mm. there's something I've always said about us Africans, mm. and people always laugh when I say it. I say that until we start to accept therapy and counseling, mm. um, we will keep having issues because sometimes when you're in a relationship and a marriage with someone and you're having issues with that person, you need someone external who is not biased. Mm. who is trained to understand human emotions, you know. You need somebody else to tell you, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? Maybe talk to yourself instead of talking down at yourself. Mm. Because in Nigeria, we face a lot of issues every day. But because we, we don't know how to handle our emotions, mm. some of us marry for strange reasons. Some people marry for convenience. Mm. Some people marry out of family arrangements. Some people marry out of peer pressure. Yes. So they don't get to know and understand their partner. So you might be sure that you've married somebody who has carried a traumatic experience yes, that they haven't absolutely. dealt with. Hmm. So that person is bringing in baggage into that relationship. Maybe you do, you have your own. Mm -hmm. You bring in your own into yeah. the relationship. Then when you bring your baggage together, everything will explode. The next thing. I'm done. I can't handle it. It's a considerable difference. I can't live with this person anymore. The marriage is not going on well. We don't love each other anymore. Sometimes, it might not even be that you don't love each other anymore. It might be that it's because you don't know how to resolve issues. Mm. It escalates to the point where you are so upset. The last thing you want to think about is love. So you yes. just feel we don't love each other anymore. Mm. But it might not even be true. But you, you won't know that. An expert will know that. A therapist will know that. A counselor will know that. For our people, we are not open to go. You're saying men. You tell your husband, can you let go and see a marriage counselor? He will look at you and like, are you mad? <laughs> what do they want to tell me where I know this? Exactly. Or sometimes you know, they will even give the responses that they believe that the, 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 yeah. therapy, the therapist wants to hear. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So at the end of the day, people think it's easy to just go and fight for divorce. But they don't realize that to get married is easy. Hmm. To divorce, it's not easy. That one, that, that one is dragging. You will drag the matter. <laughs> but there are some things that can be avoided, you know, if only both parties can understand each other's temperament. There are some times that my husband will tell me, Stella, you have to understand the language I speak. My husband doesn't like it when you keep repeating something and hounding him. <laughs> if you tell him once, no, let it go. If you go up and say, hey, but I've been telling you that he hates it, he will just switch off. So now that I've understood that part of him, I will tell him something wrong. And when I'm upset with him, I don't raise my voice. My husband hates it. He will tell you, Tell me anything you want to tell me. Even if you want to insult me, fine. But don't raise your voice at me. All right. Thank you Because so I much. understand that about him, you know, I, I, I try to apply it. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Esther. We will go on a quick break and return after our headline news. But first, a word from our sponsors. Do not touch that. that. This is Real Talk with Stella Damasos. <laughs> Again, welcome back, Stella. Thanks for staying with us. A little secret for Thank you. our listeners. Stella is uh, one of my favorite actresses and that I adore. And we both seem to share similar past, which is why I'm keen on picking all many lessons, all my lessons or some lesson from this <laughs> episode. So thank you so much. So Stella, uh, oh, we have, yeah. we have another caller on the line. Hello, what's your name and where are you calling from, please? Please, I would advise to speak uh, up. Yeah, thank you. Hello, hello, Kika. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Please, where are you calling from? What's your name? Yeah, yeah my name is Ikenda. Okay. I'm from All right, what's your contribution today? Yes, um, uh, um, Stella, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I, I, yeah. 
Yes, good evening. Good to hear your voice again. And I just, we just what I want to say. I've listened um, to the you know, later in the program. I didn't join early enough. Mm -hmm. But um, with the little I've listened to, and uh, with the much I know mm -hmm. of um, Stella Damascus, I, want, I just wanted to ask, uh, does she have any mentorship program for young women, young ladies? Because I must uh, be very, very... Uh, since uh, there are quite a lot of ladies out there who don't even know their folk, you don't even know uh, their purpose in life actually, and um, it worries me. And uh, why it worries me much? What worries me more is this: mm. I even have, um, I have relations, I have female relations, I have female friends who sometimes I really, really feel for them. So I'm just want, I just want to know if she has a mentorship program for. Mm. All right. Thank you very much. All right, Stella, that's okay. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, I've 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 had a mentoring. I've had a mentoring um, facility. I had one in Abuja. I had that in 2011. It was called Adiva Mentoring. Mm -hmm. Everything that I've been doing for Adiva has been for women and young girls. And even right now in America, I still mentor people. I have, before the lockdown, I used to have some hangouts. I had some meetups with young girls. They send me DMs, they send me emails, and I talk to them as much as I can. I've known that um, there's an issue with mentoring, especially with African girls, finding somebody that can help them, you know. And uh, I've always said I'm not one to be glamorous and be doing, you know, glam and money and expensive things. I always want to make sure that I help people. Whatever I post, whatever I say, whatever I do is to encourage and inspire younger girls. Because I have daughters too. So, Adiva Mentoring is something that I started. A lot of people might not know about it, but hopefully after the lockdown, they'll get to hear more about it. All right. Thank you so much for that. And I um, thank you so much also for the callers. Um, Stella, the next question I have for you is, um, the controversies still lingers that, and um, some people say that our mothers are better than the women of today in terms of marital successes and the divorce rates. What's your take in this controversy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me be honest with you. Yeah. Our mothers didn't have it better than us. Okay. It was just a choice that they made. Mm -hmm. You know, before now, divorce was a taboo. It was mm -hmm. a stigma. Mm -hmm. If you mention divorce, people will look at you like an outcast. Mm -hmm. So some of our mothers went through a lot. A lot of women went through domestic violence. Mm -hmm. They went through assault. They were beaten. You know, they were treated like nothing. Mm -hmm. But they decided, as I've entered this husband's house, I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. If you fear that they will kill me, let them kill me here. That was their choice. Oh, yeah. but, <laughs> but now that we're in this generation and we're exposed to Oh, if you can't be with this person, you can walk away. Um, if you can't handle this, you can walk away. You have rights, you know. Now, right, a lot of feminism. Can you hold your thought, please? We have a call on the line. Hello, what's your name and where are you coming okay. from, please? All oh, right, we lost that. Please, Stella, go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, with a lot of exposure to feminism, women's rights, and all of that, it becomes easier for our generation to say, you know what? I won't deal with what my mother dealt with. I can't handle this. I'm walking away. I can be my own person, mm -hmm. you know. So that's not the only difference. The choice that we made, the fact that before now, divorce and separation was a stigma, but now it's okay. Mm. All right. Thank you, you know. Thank you yeah. so much for that. And I think I should just add to what you just said. I think during our mother's period or time, they didn't have the economy power to do certain things. Yeah. And you see that. Most, yeah. most of the time, you know, and there's always sentiment regarding the children. They will tell you, oh, because of the children yeah. sit there, because of the... That is the reason why most of them go to their grave being angry, bitter, and not fulfilled, mm -hmm. to be honest. All right. Thank you so much yeah. for that. So, um, again, you know, this, this part is a little bit uh, interesting. Many, you know, many people during this lockdown have confessed, uh, confessed that they are intimacy i don't want to use the word the x word <laughs> i know you know what i'm talking yeah. about uh, they are, yeah they are, uh, intimacy lifestyle in this um uh, in their marriage have improved in this covid19 period oh. how can mm -hmm. this lv lifestyle be maintained in as in post covid19 period knowing that 
after the lockdown have been lifted are they still going to be enjoying that other room so to speak <laughs> They can, they can, they can enjoy the other room. <laughs> it is very possible. Yeah. What I, what I always advise some of my clients is that if you know that you live a busy life, mm -hmm. you have to create personal time intentionally. Mm -hmm. So my husband and I, on Sundays, we don't touch our phones. Mm -hmm. We don't communicate with the outside world. Mm -hmm. On Fridays from three o'clock in the afternoon, we're done. Mm -hmm. So from that three o'clock in the afternoon for the whole weekend is our own. We don't, unless we want to go somewhere together, but we dedicate it to ourselves because we know that Monday to Friday, right. we are busy, we are right. doing Stella, meetings. Stella, can you please, uh, okay, yeah. go ahead. We lost that call as well. Go ahead, please. A lot of people have been trying to call Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, so it's, it, the, couple, the couple have to intentionally create time for themselves. Mm. Speak one day in a week where you know both of you can say, you know what? No, no work, no touching of anything, even if it's weekend. So, so is for both of us. And then start to create the atmosphere. If you enjoy the intimacy this period and you want to enjoy it further, it might not be as frequent as it is now, but at least you can pick one day in the weekend and just say, we are going to be in the room 24-7. If you come out, is to go and get food. Let us be here. Let's talk. Let's set our mood. Let's set the atmosphere. Let's right. play some nice. All right, Stella, we have another call on the night. Sorry, I had to inject you while you're trying to okay. All right, Hello, what's your name and where are you fine. calling from, please? Please, in one minute. Hello, hello, Kike. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, what's your name? Good evening. Yeah. Yeah, yes, good evening. Okay. I said, I came from Lagos. Okay. Okay. I, I want to put this question to. Uh, Stella. Yeah, go ahead, she can hear you. You know why, Stella? Like, uh, I thought, was it yesterday that I was actually watching um, Rock and I actually saw you on TV and I was like, wow, are you back to acting? So that, that would be cool. Now, I want to ask this question. Mm. How do you relate, how can you describe the king and the queen relationship compared to the relationship like how how would you relate that to the husband and wife relationship, the king and queen relationship, and to the husband and wife relationship that we that we actually have today? And that's my question to you. Stella. All right, thank you so much, Stella. Did you get that? I heard it, but I don't know if I understand the question. Yeah, I, I don't think I quite understand. I think what is trying to um, the message is trying to pass across is the obas, as in what how can you the royals? Yeah, the royalties. How can you compare? their relationship to the regular uh the normal people do you understand mm -hmm. in terms of how mm -hmm. can they manage one another so to speak yeah yeah but the, the truth of the matter is what people see in, in the way of the king and queen is what they want you to see but when they go into the house into their bedroom it's a different bring them all together. They are as normal as can be. At least I know a traditional ruler from my mother's village. And he's a very normal guy when he's not in the palace, when he's not on the throne. <laughs> so so they have to live a certain lifestyle for people to see them as, you know, um they, they inspire people, they motivate people and they are they are worthy of emulation. But outside of that, they are normal. They're normal like everyday people. All right. Thank you so much for that. I have a message from you. It says, good evening, Real Talk with Kike. It's good to have Stella on the show today. Please, does she organize seminars or programs online on relationships and marriage or a blog where where we can access information on relationships and message? I think she, and that's from Ayobami or Konla, or that's one of our Madden um, fans on Real Talk with Kike. Stella, yeah. that's for you. I think you mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you. So, because of time... Yeah, Guay, do you have anything to say to that? No, no, no. I've, okay. I've talked about it before. Exactly. I mean, all after right. the lockdown, they will see more. Yeah. Like that. All right. Thank you so much. So, because of time, I think I just have um, um, one question for you. Many online uh, banters and tweets have for the idea mm -hmm. that infidelity and uh, promiscuity will return to previous rates once lockdown is over. Do you agree with that? Even after some marriages have experienced a better healing during this period. 
Yeah. Please, in, in, <laughs> in one minute, please, anything. if you can. Yeah. It, it doesn't, the lockdown doesn't change anything. Promiscuity right. and all of the infidelity is not because of lockdown or no lockdown. Mm. People who are like that will still be like that, regardless. Oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you so much yeah. for that. So, Stella, on a lighter mm -hmm. note, because we've, we've run out of time, you know, I wish we can go on mm -hmm. and on and on. In, on, on, in a lighter um, gesture, what makes your romance life so unique and how do you enjoy the uniqueness of Stella? <laughs> ah, my romantic life is amazing because my husband and I try to outdo each other every day. We have a competition who's more romantic. Hey. So, in the business, to enter that challenge, we now try to do mm. romantic things that will outweigh the other mm. person's role. And we enjoy it in the process. Mm. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Stella, for all you've shared with yes. us today. And for your brilliancy you. and uh, immaculate delivery, I must say. It, was, it feels like Thank we should you. go on and on. However... This is where we draw the curtains for today's episode. Thank you so, so much, Stella, for spending part of your you. time with us today. To so our, our listeners and our followers, I say thank you for staying tuned. Bye now. <laughs>